From December 31, 192 AD to March 28, 193 AD, Publius Helvius Pertinax held the title of Emperor of Rome for a brief period of 87 days. Despite his short reign, Pertinax was known for his unwavering integrity and commitment to good governance, even in the face of deep-rooted corruption inherited from his predecessor. Pertinax's early life was marked by humble beginnings. He was born on August 1, 126 AD in Alba Pompeii in Liguria, to Helvetius successors, a freedman who founded a school after his release. Like his father, Pertinax initially worked in education as a grammarian. However, he eventually sought out more challenging opportunities and successfully secured a position as prefect to a cohort, thanks to the recommendation of his father's former master. Pertinax's dedication and skill in the Parthian War led to a series of promotions, eventually earning him a seat in the Senate during the reign of Marcus Aurelius. He also served in various military and administrative roles in Britannia, on the Danube, and in Dacia and Syria. Though he suffered a setback due to a court intrigue during Marcus Aurelius's reign, Pertinax was soon called back to assist Claudius Pompeianus in the Marcomanni War. Pertinax's impressive track record culminated in his appointment as suffect consul in 175 AD. He went on to serve as governor of Upper and Lower Moesia, Dacia, Syria, and Britannia, before being named consul and prefect of Rome in 192 AD. Despite his many accomplishments, Pertinax's reign as emperor was brief, cut short by those who sought to undermine his efforts to combat corruption and improve governance. Nonetheless, his rise from humble beginnings to the highest office in the Roman Empire remains an inspiring example of determination and achievement. As Commodus grew increasingly erratic in the early 190s AD, plots emerged to eliminate him. Some sources suggest that Pertinax was involved in the conspiracy that eventually led to Commodus' assassination on December 31, 192 AD. However, other accounts claim that Pertinax reluctantly accepted the imperial title. The Praetorian prefect Quintus Emilius Letus, Commodus' mistress Marcia, and his chamberlain Eclectus carried out the plot. Following the murder, presumably committed by the athlete Narcissus in the evening of December 31, Pertinax, then serving as Prefectus Urbi, was quickly taken to the barracks of the Praetorian Guard. That same night, it was announced that Pertinax had become the new emperor. Pertinax's brief reign of almost three months was marked by turmoil. He attempted to reinstate Marcus Aurelius' just policies, but Commodus' corrupt regime could not be dismantled so quickly. Morals had considerably deteriorated in the twelve years since Marcus Aurelius' death and Pertinax faced opposition from various quarters. The Praetorian Guard reluctantly accepted Pertinax as their leader. Most of them feared the strict discipline that Pertinax sought to reintroduce and secretly longed for the licentiousness that Commodus had enabled. Within days, on January 3, some members of the Praetorian Guard attempted a coup by presenting the imperial purple to a noble senator, who refused. Ancient writers provide detailed accounts of how the Praetorian Guard expected a generous donation to celebrate Pertinax's accession to the throne. When they were disappointed with the amount offered, they expressed their displeasure in a manner that compelled Pertinax to provide them with more money. He achieved this by conducting a public sale of Commodus' valuable properties, including the concubines and sorcerers whom Commodus had kept for his sexual pleasures. Meanwhile, Pertinax endeavoured to eliminate corruption with good intentions. He made a concerted effort to reform the Alimenta programme, and implemented significant changes to the Roman currency. The purity of the denarius was greatly increased from 74% to 87%, and the absolute silver weight rose from 2.22 grams to 2.75 grams. Despite these efforts, a second unsuccessful coup occurred in early March. Consul Sosius Flaco, one of the conspirators, was apprehended. However, Pertinax advocated for leniency out of respect for the senatorship. The most significant threat, however, came from the Praetorian Guard, who remained dissatisfied with the succession process. On March 28, 193 AD, around 300 Praetorian soldiers breached the palace gates while Pertinax was inside. According to the Historia Augusta, 
they had only received half of the promised payment, leading to their rebellion. The palace guard and imperial officials did not resist their advance. Patinax dispatched Letus to negotiate with them, but Letus ultimately betrayed the emperor and sided with the mutinous soldiers. Despite being advised to flee, Patinax, then 66 years old, chose to confront the Praetorians himself. His efforts were initially successful, but one soldier suddenly attacked him with a sword, fatally injuring him. Patinax had been aware of the danger of assuming the imperial title, which is why he had previously refused to bestow it on his wife and son. This decision ensured their safety in the event of his death. The Praetorian Guard sought to extract the highest possible donation from the newly crowned emperor, engaging in a scheme of pitting two contenders against each other. In the end, the wealthy and influential senator Didius Julianus emerged victorious by offering the highest bid, but he soon realized the perils of his ambitious pursuit. His ascension to the throne in the spring of 193 AD incited a brief civil conflict that was resolved by Septimius Severus, the governor of Upper Pannonia. Didius Julianus was executed on June 2, 193 AD, while it took until 197 AD for Severus to quell the last of the two other rival emperors, Clodius Albinus, after eliminating Persenius Niger in 194 AD. Upon entering Rome, Septimius Severus acknowledged Pertinax's legitimate reign and punished the soldiers responsible for his assassination. He ordered the Senate to deify Pertinax and organize a state funeral while also incorporating Pertinax's name into his own. Games commemorating Pertinax's birthday and ascension to the throne were held after his death. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel.